I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, City of Shelton study session today. And the first item on our business is our weekly commission reports. Commissioner Moore. Um, let's see. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, I have an executive housing board, housing coalition board meeting. Um, we'll be discussing our bylaws and uh, working on a more cohesive plan so that we can share that with the community better and uh, maybe get even more grants than we have gotten in the past. Um, I have uh, some private um, meetings regarding city issues um, with individual constituents. On Wednesday, I have, um, I'm going to attend the Sound Learning Annual um, Christmas celebration at the Colonial House. It's from 6 to 9. If anyone is interested, wants to know more about sound learning, it would be an awesome opportunity. It's open to the public. Um, on Saturday, there is a fundraiser at um, the Shelton Cinemas to benefit Southside School, and it is a showing of the Polar Express and it is $5 per ticket for anybody who wants to come and, and help Southside School Booster Club. And that's it for this week. All right, thank you. Commissioner McDowell? Um, Wednesday, I have a, a Board of Health meeting at 9 a.m. We didn't have a quorum our last meeting, so we had to, there's some things that we have to vote on. So that's been called for Wednesday morning at 9. Also Wednesday morning, uh, or Wednesday from 11, at 11 o'clock, I'll be attending the EDC luncheon out at the PUD. Wednesday evening, I will be attending the sound learning at the Colonial House for a short amount of time. Uh, Chambers after hours is that evening, so I'll be going there. Um, Thursday, the City Employee Appreciation Luncheon. I will be yes, there. I will be there as well. And uh, next Monday uh, at the PUD3, they are going to be uh, presenting to the public um, the possibility of selling the old the building on Coda, and they have to have a public meeting. So myself and I invited uh, Chief Moody to go with me, and we'll kind of spokesperson it for the city and and to see what goes on. So anyway, we'll I'll be there next Monday on that. So I wanted to announce that, and that is it. All right, thank you. Um, Tuesday, I will be attending my MACECOM board meeting. Wednesday, it looks like if there's an EDC lunch on Wednesday at the, yeah, at the PUD, I will be attending that one. And also, then there's a chamber after hours on Wednesday uh, in the evening that I will be also attending. Uh, obviously, we're all gonna be at the employee appreciation lunch on Thursday. And then on Friday, I am planning to uh, go to Linda's going away party. Linda? No. Lynn. That's right. I wrote Linda, but I knew it was Lynn. Lynn, she's been working with the police, uh, in with the police officers for how many years? 24 years. So I'm planning to go to that event and then skip over to the Colonial House to attend another EDC event at the Colonial House. So that completes... Our commission reports for this week. I also um, plan to attend Lunds going away. All right. And so now is that general public comment period. And so if anybody wants to speak, they just need to sign in, and uh, they are welcome to do that. Anybody sign in? We have Randy Lewis. Okay. Hi, everybody. Randy Lewis. One quick comment about our favorite subject, the roundhouse. My personal concerns on the roundhouse issues had more to do with process and transparency rather than the issue itself. That being said, I do support the decision for the city to decline acceptance of the roundhouse. Whatever the path to get to the decision, I believe that there was a high probability that ultimately the city was going to have to decline to accept the property. However, as Sean Kemp would say, that water is now passed under the table. The issue now is between Simpson and the Roundhouse advocates. In my opinion, that is where it belonged in the first place. There is no reason the city had to be the intermediary. I don't get why the city was put between that particular rock and hard place. Here's the basis of, for my support of the decision. 
A big concern is precious staff time and focus, a resource badly needed for other urgent city business. As my friend Bill Busaka mentioned, Ryan already has too many balls he is juggling. Uh, I have another comment, can't quite remember. Uh, given last week's decision, if somehow the Roundhouse advocates pull off their dream of restoring the Roundhouse at the current site, God bless them, and I personally will help if I can. I also would expect the city and the commission to be true to their word and support this effort as well, assuming no significant staff time is used. However, if the Roundhouse Advocates and Simpson cannot make the restoration work on the current site, there are other ways to go. Uh, it is not a bad thing for SBI to have the freedom on the waterfront to do whatever they need to do to create jobs. Some of us would argue that it is the best scenario for Shelton in the current environment. Someone at SBI mentioned to me that SBI is willing to assist in preserving all the cool Simpson Railroad stuff so that down the road Simpson uh, the Roundhouse advocates will be able to retrieve this, these historical uh, artifacts to construct their museum. I'll let others make official announcements with details. I'm sure I will be contradicted, but in my humble opinion, there is no magic to the current Roundhouse site. The original Roundhouse was in another location downtown somewhere until just after World War II when the current Roundhouse was built on the current site. It's not as if Saul Simpson himself built the current Roundhouse over there in 1895. Realize this is a comment from uh, a guy who's still ticked off about the Brown Gym. As for options, as an example only, as Kathy mentioned, the old PUD building is available. There's time pressure on that particular option, as she said, but it's just an example. The point is there are other alternatives to the current site without the obstacles that some argued, but did not prove were insurmountable. Thank you. Thank you, anybody else? Excuse me, I would like to comment. I know we don't typically do that, but I just would like to set the record straight that, believe me, I have always felt that a nonprofit would be the best recipient of the properties. However, with Simpson's agreement with SPI, it could only be given to the city. So we are, um, and then the city could do whatever they wanted with it. However, um, I'm hoping to work with Simpson and change that. We're working on that. And the reason that the building is so important is that it is a nationally eligible, uh, National Register eligible building, which means that it is a special creature. And as you would see in all the reports, it is a very unique building. So that's just to clarify. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next is a consent agenda, which we rarely, but today we have none, and there's nothing on our action agenda, but we have some items under old business. And so at this time, I would like to turn this meeting over to our public works director, Craig Gregory. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, today, staff is looking for direction on the Evergreen Safe Routes to Schools grant and the project moving forward. This grant was given to us back in 2013. Uh, total amount of the grant was 497700 We have not, as a city, expended any funds towards this project at this time. Overall cost estimate at this point is $937,540, leaving city responsibility to finish the project of $467,840. Is that it? That was a report. <laughs> boy, oh boy. He's waiting. <laughs> What, I'm going to try and keep most of this fairly short for you today because I've got an awful lot to share with you today. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, I guess this would be, uh, according to my notes, uh, just our input on this discussion here um, for direction here. So I don't see any public input on this particular item. May I speak then? There should be. We, we're asking. 
Yeah. So if you decided to vote, yeah. like we did uh, on the Pear Orchard and SR3 mm -hmm. projects, then we would take public comment. And I certainly can okay. answer any additional questions that you do have. Sure. Okay, well, let's, do, let's start then on this one. Let's start with our comments about it. So. Okay, I will go first. Um, as painful as it is um, going down the direction we are, trying to um, clarify our projects to work more efficiently with other funders, and um, I believe that it only makes sense to turn the money back on this and give up on this project temporarily, but I think we need to regroup and make a decision and work quickly on seeking more grants immediately with maybe uh, a commitment to finishing the project. Um, I think this is a great project, but uh, since we haven't spent any of that money and the city would have to come up with 469700 um, it's obvious that we have to not do that project send the money back or we haven't gotten it yet yeah, whatever but nix that project at, for temporary until we can you know find more funding for it um, somewhere down the road when we're a little more stable if you decide to give this grant back we will have to go back out looking for funding for the entire right. project not right. just the portion mm -hmm. yeah that the city is needing to fund at this point right it means we would give back that half a million dollars and then would have to regroup and go after additional funds is there a timeline on that grant but is there a timeline on that grant we have been given a timeline by local programs that we need to either move forward with the project or give the funding back. So there's no date like you have till this date to keep this grant money and then you have to give it back. There's not a date. Is there a date? It indicated a year ago that we needed to start treating this grant and other grants mm -hmm. we had with them appropriately and at that time we did not respond appropriately. So Okay. Without a hard deadline, they have given us every indication that the time to make a decision is now. Yes. I, okay. I have um, one clarification on this. So we have not spent any money. So rather than having to come up with money to pay back, we would be um, declining the grant. Is that right? That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, in 2013, you know, we made decisions and we were uh, very hopeful that we would have a financial condition in much better condition than um, where we are today. I think that uh, just like in everybody's personal life, you cannot, what the Rolling Stones said, you can't always get what you want, you know. So I think we have to decline this one. And what we have to do in all of our financial decisions is we have to set priorities. And we have a couple of priorities that we are going to have no wiggle room on at all. And that's Basin 3. Uh, that's going to be coming down the track next year. And that could be millions of dollars. And I'm doing everything within my power to, to find more grant money for that project. And then the C Street land dump, fill, landfill, is going to be another one that when that one comes down, we will not be able to say, we want you to take it back. And so I think we have to and make a prudent decision to set our financial house in order. And so nobody likes doing these things. It would be much better if we okayed everything forever, but I would have to say we have to, at this point, give this money back and, and look for more finances to come into the city to help us pay for things like this. Along that line, I got an email today from um, the Regional Transportation Planning Office, or and um, they've just announced a new $100,000 grant for uh, ADA accessibility. And I'm thinking that when we are more organized, that would be the type of grant that we would apply for that would, um, that would um, help with these other projects to complete the projects and lessen our city fund funding portion of it. So um, yeah, it makes me really sad. <laughs> So really sad. So it appears that we concur, and so if we concur, then we might want to vote on this, which means we have to open this up for any public input. So, is that correct? 
correct. So we need to sign in maybe on a different sheet. I don't know. Maybe we sign in on the same sheet. Uh, usually we have a separate sheet for sign public in. action. So. We'll get it, Mike. We'll sign in. And you can give that to Marilyn. We have Mike Olson. We have Mike Olson. Here's a couple questions. Um, I was a commissioner when this grant came available, and as I remember, we, we had discussions on changing the uh, requirements for curb, gutter, and sidewalk, and I thought that this was part of it that we discussed being able to do monopores and not pave, you know, the gutters to cut down the cost. It, was that still a consideration when you, when you figured in your $400,000 cost for the city? I don't know if we can answer or who can answer. I'm kind of asking Greg because he's the guy. <laughs> Greg, if you have an answer for that, that would be permissible. Do you, would you like me to come forward and answer that question? Well, I think we can answer that question. I mean, you know, we generally don't, but, you know, uh, I think that this could be information that's, you know, mm -hmm. something that we could all glean from. So if you could come, and we can't do this all the time, but Commissioner Olson, you, you, you want to... One of the, the question I, I'm trying to get to is that, you know, the, the city's cost is a half a million dollars, uh, approximately, not that. And, and if we can cut that down, I don't remember what the grant said, can we do the, the ADA only? Or, you know, can we, you know, to piece it up, piecemeal it out, or do we have to do the whole project going forward? Okay, Craig, Craig's only a couple weeks on the job, so yeah, I, I think it was at this point that that would be uh, uh, be something. Do you have some answers on that? Okay. I certainly can answer that if you would like. I, I think I would like, as the chair of this meeting, to have that question answered. At the staff level, we have talked about trying to change the scope of work. Um, we have reached out to the granting agency. It does not seem likely that you could change the scope of work. Um, to go from curb gutter sidewalk to a monopore and as a city I'm not sure that that's what we would like to do either um, we have a lot of those in the downtown area that cars end up pulling up on and parking on because they are at the same grade of the parking strip which decreases the walkability of our sidewalks if you've got cars that are pulling onto those sidewalks and pulling right up to fences and blocking those sidewalks off. So that would be difficult to do and to change the scope of work would be very difficult to do at this point. There okay. could have been a possibility early on with this grant, but as it begins to age even further, that becomes much more difficult. Thank you for your I information. Could you explain what monopore is? It would be at surface level with the, technically you could raise it with a monopore. You could pour a thicker slab. So it would come up to the level of the sidewalk, right? You, you, you could raise it. You could pour a six inch monopore okay. um, to get the feel and look of a curb and gutter. Okay. You would still have a lot of issues with drainage because storm drainage was not figured into the original scope of work and neither was any of the treatment between the pavement edge and what would be the curb or gutter portion of the sidewalk, which would need to be done in that area. The elevations are very flat. Um, and it would be difficult to get drainage without curb gutter, <laughs> sidewalk, and road edge treatment. Okay. I have another sure. question, too. Um, <clears throat> through, I realize you've only been <laughs> part of this grant for a little while, but it has been my understanding that the um, scope of work that we presented, and based on that scope of work we were given the grant, that the scope of work included language that it would include curb, curb gutter sidewalk. And so that's what I have been told as part of the problem is that um, the grant would not be, we wouldn't be meeting the conditions of the grant if we didn't do that. 
That is correct. It was originally scoped at curb gutter sidewalk. It would need to be changed. And at that at this point, it would be difficult to get the granting yeah. agency to change that scope of work. Mm -hmm. And it, originally, the scope of work did not include any storm drainage or road edge treatment. Mm -hmm. We will call you back when we need you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any you. other public comment? We have Marilyn Vogler. Marilyn Vogler, 420 East Poplar. I certainly understand this decision and others you have made and will make, but I would like to request a bit of realism on the part of the Commission as you talk about these things in the future. Because when you talked about SR3 and the pear orchard, you said, oh, we can, we'll reach a point when we can do this in the future. And now you're saying, oh, we'll reach a point when we can do this in the future. And I would simply ask that you realize between now and the future, there are going to be another um, a, a number of other priorities come up. And we may never get to these projects that we're have to put, having to put off. And the other thing I would remind you is that, as you know, but forget when we're talking about futures, grants almost always come with a match at least as large as the grant. Often the, the match is more, the grant is only a small portion. And so to talk about immediately going out and looking for grants or next year going out and looking for grants, really, I won't say it's misleading, but I think it's false optimism and, and I hope in talking with the public you will be honest about saying we likely won't be doing these for a very long time, if it ever. Thank you. Thank you. We have Forrest, Forrest Cooper. Really? <laughs> I have to state it for the record. I haven't spoken in a while. You don't have to use a timer. He, he comes in on the second almost every time he speaks. <laughs> That's okay. We'll make this one really, really brief. Uh, Forrest Cooper, 409 West Railroad and 807 South 14th. Um, I, I, I remember, I just want to kind of echo some of what Mike talked about here. Um, I remember sitting in on those commission meetings when this was originally discussed, and there were discussions of, of a monopour. And if some of you aren't really familiar with that, just take a walk down Coda and kind of see what condition the sidewalks are in. You'll get an idea of where a monopore is. Then there's like a, a duplex or an apartment complex down there that has the full frontage treatment on it, which is like over and around. It's all really discombobulated. Um, I think you guys are making the right decision with this one here. Uh, if we don't have the budget for it, um, I see you making a lot of adjustments and Ryan's doing an awesome job um, trying to manage everything and get it together. So I applaud you on that. Um, however, the, the underlying problem that this was solving is the safety of kids getting back and forth to school. Now, um, uh, you probably remember over the last four years uh, when my daughter was little, I used to take her out in the stroller and we'd go walk all around downtown. And during that, that was such a, a eye-opening time for me because here I was with a wheeled vehicle trying to get around downtown. And Coda Street is one in particular that is very difficult to navigate. And then we got a couple of train tracks to go up and over, you know. You get all the way down to 10th and 12th and everything. It gets pretty, uh, pretty bad down there. And Craig mentioned that the monopore cars park on the sidewalk. There's actually some down there where one particular property has like four cars that pull all the way up to the fence. And you're forced to walk out into the street to go around them. Now I think some of that is also uh, uh, an enforcement thing. We need to find out how to keep cars off the sidewalk and there's ways to do that now without spending money on new sidewalks. Um, but I do think something needs to be looked at. I think even as you put this one aside and move on, we still need to realize that there is some issues getting back and forth to the school safely, and I think there are ways to address it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I had I have a question for Ryan, and this is something that um, I'm concerned about as we're letting go of all of these projects. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to need to let go of staff if we have no projects to manage? We haven't really discussed that, and I am concerned about that. So these projects have been sitting 
Mm -hmm. We've essentially let these projects go years ago. Mm -hmm. We've just been putting off the realization and telling the public, <coughs> excuse me, that we weren't going to do these projects. So in terms of staff, I can't say that there will be no cutbacks, but as we've looked at things, we haven't spent money on these projects. So this is a perfect example. There, there has been revenue tagged for these projects, but we've had roles unfilled. So we've had an associate engineer and a city engineer position now that have been unfilled for some time. And if we ever were, are to go forward with these, if you decided today, if we went through with these two projects and did other projects, we would fill those roles. But at this point, we've been for years holding off and bringing staff on to do so. But we've had other projects that, that um, we have completed. Mm -hmm. And so if, if we don't have the projects, I realize we are planning to do a lot of paving this year, but um, that's different from large capital projects. Correct. So I guess that's my concern is that I don't want to get so bare bones that our staff has nothing to do and we're not taking, we're not making progress in our city. Because it feels like with letting go of these projects, we are going backwards. And I, I don't want to do that. We don't, so we won't make decisions on these projects. We're not going to make recommendations to you based on staffing needs. We will certainly do the opposite. We will staff around the work that we have. At this point, we don't have plans for any layoffs. I would say that what we're trying to do with the two projects that you have in front of you today is we're trying to get out of the pattern that we've seen with some of the other mm -hmm. projects that we're going to discuss later, that if we went forward to some of these projects, we would be back in six months or a year telling you that we need another half million dollars to get these things done. Mm -hmm. And that's and what we, we're trying to avoid. Yeah, we do want to avoid that. I just want to always keep in mind that um, you know, I, I just always want us to know what the repercussions could possibly mm -hmm. be. We don't have any plans for layoffs related to these projects. Okay, okay as chair of this meeting, has anything that's been discussed by the public process uh, changed your opinion, or do we still concur that we can vote to um, give this grant money back? Um, I very reluctantly concur. Okay, so... At, yes, I do too. Okay, so at this point we've had public comment, and I guess I would entertain a motion to uh, give this $467,840 back. You're making the motion? No, I entertain oh. somebody, <laughs> because that's um, how we do it. Tracy, you want to make that, or you want me to? Sure, I can do that. I will meddle my way through. Okay. Um, I move that... We decline this grant in the amount of, which number is it? 467. $469,700 that was previously a grant that we had for Evergreen Safe Routes to School. And second. Yeah. Are you done? I think so. Okay. I will second that. Okay. We've got a motion a and a second. second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The motion passes. All right. Thank you. Next, we have the Downtown Creeks Project. And this, again, will be presented to us by our Public Works Director, Craig Gregory. This grant was given to us back in 2007. There's a map uh, within your packet showing the areas. There's some ADA ramps in three different intersections. And then the creek directly to the north of the MTA building, in between MTA and Safeway to open up a section of that creek that is currently capped with concrete panels. We have expended $63,457 on design up to this point. The city portion 
remaining funds of federal funds are four hundred and thirty six thousand eight forty seven remaining funds that would need to be expended by the city to complete this project would be four hundred and seven thousand two hundred and sixteen dollars and staff is requesting direction on this project also okay so uh, I guess uh, we would probably want to open this up for any more public comment I guess at this point if anybody would have anything they want to say now would be the opportunity I would just ask the same question you know, in consideration of downsizing a project or modifying it possibly okay <coughs> all right so we've had public comment and so at this point, it is uh, the opportunity for us to discuss our feelings about another grant uh, refund. Is there a way of modifying that? It'd probably be have to go back with a grant. And this one that. is much older than the one that we just discussed. Okay. And the possibility of rescoping this one would be difficult as well. Okay. It would probably cost a lot of money to do that. Would, would you see a price tag on that one to redo it? Most likely it would be the direction that the commission directed us to go to what that would, that change of scope would be. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, these are difficult decisions. Not, nothing's easy, you know, but we have to, you know, I've talked to bankers, I've talked to real estate people and financial people, and, you know, we have to, get a hold of the city's finances. And what I did is I wrote a, a statement that I would say pertains to both of these, and this is how I feel about it. I sincerely believe that the vast majority of our ratepayers who live in the city of Shelton do not want us to continue to borrow millions of dollars to fund projects that we cannot afford to finish. And I believe that Nobody likes to start things and not finish them, but folks, we lost 500 jobs. The recession hasn't totally bounced back. And as far as I can remember, we've never said no to anything. And so I think we have to put our prudent hats on and we have to um, look at these things and other things that may, and set our priorities. Because on Basin 3 and the C Street dump, we will have no option to say we don't want to pay. Those are coming down the tracks very soon so I unfortunately I would have to say that I would give the grant money back on this project also so this one is not only grant money though that it's money that we've already expended that's correct you the city would have to pay back sixty three thousand four hundred and fifty seven dollars that's been spent that's been for the design that is correct so I'm sorry Tracy I didn't mean to interrupt you. Are you done? Uh, well, we can, go ahead and finish okay. your time. Okay. Right. okay. So yeah. I'm like I brought up another meeting. Is the possibility of putting those plans on a shelf, kind of tweaking them as we go, and then in the future maybe coming back to it with the design already there, and we wouldn't have to wouldn't have to do that. This design is about sixty percent complete. We would certainly receive the plans to 60%, uh -huh, okay. um, we would shelve those. And to kind of go back to the last one, we certainly, moving forward in public works, will be looking at these, re-looking at these projects and forming strategic partnerships with other agencies mm -hmm. to get some of these projects done um, to ease the burden on the city. And we certainly, in the past, I think, have looked at projects and gone after one grant, and a, one grant in particular for each project, which doesn't seem like the way to go about things. Mm -hmm. There are multiple opportunities out there to fund these if you just go looking for them and also solidify those partnerships to get these done, which I don't know that we have ever done in the past. What, what I'm thinking here is that, um, the, yeah, it would be great to have the 
the creeks daylighted for the fish and for the people walking past and looking and having some other work done. But I don't see this project as being something that in puts our city forward. Um, this is kind of a, I would think, almost like a beautification project along with the ADA and whatever else has to be done. But I don't find a necessity to have to do this, uh, this creek project. Um, regarding that, I do have a question. I was under the impression that there were some accessibility um, that were out of compliance with ADA, and so that's part of the importance of this project. We have concerns all throughout town with that. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> we've talked about the need to have a citywide plan mm -hmm. and that this in the future could potentially be a component of that. Mm -hmm. uh, our reality now is that these are a few corners of many in town. The one that we just talked about is another concern for ADA as you go down Coda. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a citywide plan for ADA accessibility and start moving forward that in a more systematic fashion. But as Craig mentioned, that's something that we would like to work with other agencies, particular MTA, and working in conjunction with them. This sits right along a creek. Uh, to my knowledge, we never went after fish and wildlife money or ecology money for a project that we were going to do that included a creek. So this is mm -hmm. one that we probably could have planned a little more holistically 10 years ago. And if we move forward with it in the future, that would be something that we look at. This is also a particular project that I have spoken with uh, um, um, John Bolander's mm -hmm. group, and they would be extremely interested in funding this. And I think what we have to keep in mind as well is, yes, of course our citizens are tired of, um, of racking up bills, but they're also tired of us not making progress. And uh, so I don't know what the answer is on that, but I, I think that um, we have to, if we decline this one as well, we have to come up with a plan and some promises and some assurances to our citizens in the very near future about getting back to these projects and being um, more responsible and going after the grants and completing. All of these projects are worthwhile projects. All right. Uh, does everybody feel comfortable uh, uh, on putting a motion forward to give this money back? I just, I just have to talk about this one a little bit sure. more. Um, so I, I know that the, um, the transportation benefit district is money is coming in and we did have part of those fun funds to complete paving projects and i i know that we also have a set amount that we're going to pave streets which would be different than these higher projects but do you have any idea um like by the end or by construction season how much money we would have set aside for grant match last year we brought in Right around four hundred and eighty-five thousand. The commission, I believe, approved a plan to designate sixty-five percent to capital projects, thirty percent to in-house paving projects, and five for non-motorized. At a board meeting, we did. At a board meeting, mm -hmm. I believe. So I'm sorry, somebody please give me a round idea of the math on what we would be looking at by like the end of the next quarter, just an approximate number. For which piece? For, for the capital projects. Everybody's doing math in their head right now. Randy, <laughs> you always know the answers. <laughs> You're talking... We were talking a quarter of 60%, right? How much was for capital projects? 60, 65%. So a quarter of 65%, if you're a talking only quarters of the year. A quarter of a million that we would have in the bank for, okay. <laughs> and Tracy, just kind of to build on what Ryan 
he answered your question about staffing also. We certainly in Public Works would like to reallocate some of that time that we were spending on projects before and not doing a very good job of tracking, understanding what those actually, how we were handling those and the partnerships that we were forming. We would like to take that staff time at this point and try to move forward with doing projects correctly, rating our streets so that we understand what is a priority and actually focusing our time to coming up with priorities um, and then tackling those systematically. Um, I, I would definitely agree with that, although I know that we have to make sure that that's not viewed as spending money on, on um, plans that are not going to go anywhere. So I would want an accountability of that. Um, the other question that I have regarding this is what other projects do we have in the wings that, we're, um, that we will be doing? If, if we don't have any of these anymore, then are, are we starting afresh? Or is there anything I'm not remembering? I know we have the study for the Railroad Avenue improvements, but we haven't applied for grants for the actual construction of that, correct? We will. Go ahead. We're going to, in Craig's update, he's going to speak to what we have going on right now. We are going to have to really quickly get back to some of the projects that we updated on two months ago and figure out how to move forward. That is going to take up quite a bit of staff time in the near okay. future. Okay. But we in terms of. A, we have quite a few projects out there that have been on hold because we have been trying to get these projects together and finding all of the information on okay. these projects to bring back to the commission I know that's um, been a to get some direction. Yes. So we have had quite a few projects that are hanging out there that, like Ryan said, we certainly need to get back to in a short order. Okay, I just want to be able to show our citizens that we are, even though this is a difficult time and we're making difficult decisions, that we are moving forward for a better community. So that is, well, that's all my questions. I, I, would, I would like to entertain that. There's a lot of positive things that are going on in the city. We just went through an enormous staff change. That's why we're all working overtime to pick up and try and get things together. The positive thing, the big positive thing is what the sewer funding coalition has been doing for the past five years, and that's trying to obtain substantial grant money. Okay, on projects that we are required to do, like Basin 3. We're up to 3.4 million at the moment, and I am going to go back to the legislature this year to try and get an initial three, four, maybe five million out of the capital budget in the, over in the legislature for Basin 3, and that's a lot of hard work. And so we are working on that. I think that the citizens should be very, very thankful that this commission decided to ask more questions on the drilling of a $1.3 million well that we were told had to be put in and that we pressed and we said, can we afford it? Do we need it? Are there another options? So I think the city should be very happy with this commission's work on saving that $1.3 million by not drilling a well that didn't need to be drilled. And we, from the experts, we found out we can refurbish the old well. Those are just two examples of this commission working behind the scenes, trying to come up with finances so that we can continue to do projects that are, they're all good projects. Nobody's against any of them. But I think we have been doing our due diligence. And I think that uh, there are many other examples that we have uh, made the right decisions and, and got some extremely favorable results because I take this job seriously, and I'm sure my fellow two other commissioners do too. So there are positive things, and there's a brighter light in the future, but we've got to get our fiscal house in order. So do you have anything you want to say no, on this? I don't. Okay, so I guess at this point, if we concur, I would entertain a motion to uh, give this grant money back. I will do that. Um, I make a motion for the city to terminate the Downtown Creeks project in, and returned the federal funds of $63,457. I second that motion. There's a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes.
Now, under new business, we have our police chief, Darren Moody, is going to come and talk to us about a SCOP grant. Uh, before I do that, I had one other thing I wanted to throw out from this last week. As you saw, we had some pretty heavy snow going on. I got contacted by a citizen a couple hours ago that lives on Capitol Hill. We wanted to give kudos to the public works group for being out all night the other night that it was the first time in many, many years she said she was able to get up and actually drive down her road when it snowed. So kudos to the public works guys for putting together that team and having them out there all night. As such, I'm hesitant to bring up the word grant when I come up. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a stop grant, so this, this is a, a, yeah. a stop grant, so you're okay on that. Let me explain this before we get too far into the grant work. <coughs> This is something we've done for a few years at the police department. It is a reimbursement grant. In other words, it's not anybody giving us money and telling us to go out and do something. This is simply a reimbursement. It's through the Office of Violence and Prevention through the state for domestic violence, youth violence, violence against women. It's a reimbursement grant in such as we use transcription services sometimes for statements of victims, suspects, etc. We use officer overtime or detective call out in the middle of the night. If it comes to any of these certain crimes that fall into this grant, we can get reimbursement for staff time, um, evidence collection, things along those lines that pertain specifically to those crimes. It's a smaller grant, but it comes to the last couple of years, somewhere in the neighborhood of seven to $10,000 back to the police department in reimbursement for those crimes. This is simply, again, a follow-up to what we've done in previous years. This year we're managing it. It's a co-grant with the county, and we are actually managing it, and then we disperse funds to the county through the, from the state to us, to the county, and to the police department. And I'm happy to answer any questions, but basically it needs signatures from the commission to move forward. I'm in favor of it. Yes. No questions? No. no. Thank you. All right, wait, we got a vote or something. Don't we? It says here, let's see, you're requesting approval, uh, okay, and that this would be uh, placed on the, I'm sorry, action agenda for me to sign on behalf of the city of Shelton. So, no motion today. They're just asking you to bring it back next yeah. week under the consent yeah. agenda. That's right. Yes, I'm in Good agreement. Job. Thank you very much, sir. All right, now we're back to, oh, Craig Gregory, man, this is the Craig Gregory show, a biosolid. Okay, let's get into some positive things, okay? Let's talk about biosolids. By, by the way, I do like Chief Moody's uh, grants a lot better. No. You just get <laughs> yeah. reimbursement. Those seem to work much better. Uh, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, a couple weeks ago we signed an ILA uh, to do further treatment on digested sludge with Mason County. Um, they are planning to bring their first load to us next week. And at that time, we were directed to only seek that one agency. We have been getting quite a bit of pressure from other agencies, outside sources, private um, entities, to take their digested sludge for further treatment. We just wanted to bring back on the second page of your packet there's a breakdown of potential revenue um, by performing further treatment. At this time, this revenue does not need any additional cost for the city except for a valve um, and meter that we are going to install that we were going to install anyway. But other than that, uh, small cost of a few thousand dollars we would have no additional expense to taking this and processing it except for a slight increase in power and natural gas which we figured in um, to the cost of taking this um, but for the most part we would just be performing our normal duties in the public works department to perform this is this per year what we would be pulling in? That's annually. Annually, okay. What I would like to see on this one is before you sign all the contracts for adding other situations, so that we take your information and we run it by our new financial director and make sure that we are covering not only all of the costs that are visible, but all of the invisible costs that may be incurred and that we get literally 
these other entities to pay for that entire facility so in 20 years that money's there to replace it. I want to make sure that, that we, we recognize that we are not in the business of, of cutting our price for other entities if we're doing a product and we're doing a service to them that we have to charge a, a, a amount of money that is going to cover all of our expenses plus. So that would be my comment on this. So is that, can you put that into your agenda maybe to have a conversation with our new financial director and go over those numbers with her? We certainly can. You know, I know that the city manager and you have been talking and myself a lot about this and we've had our conversation and I got the old entrepreneurial capitalistic brain we're finally got an opportunity where we're, we're going to make some money on something make sure that we get a fair rate on what we're doing because we wouldn't want 20 years to have to buy a new machine and n realize we underpriced on a service we can run it by we'll run it by nola in craig's preparation for two weeks ago he did the run this through finance with our former accounting manager thomas donnelly but We'll make sure that we check in with Nolan. Okay, is there a time frame on this? Is this like, do we have an extra week or two, or what, we, you want an action today? You got people, contracts to be signed? <coughs> Web Hill is shut down. Yeah. Um, and we have been contacted, especially both of the tribes are looking for a place to get rid of it. It's not a dire need. They are taking it to Aberdeen at this point. Yeah. Um, you understand my, my concern. I, I want to make do. sure that, that nothing is falling through the loops on this one because we got to make sure that, that we are fully compensated for what we're doing. Yes, and, and um, as Ryan said before, we did run this past finance mm -hmm. a couple of different times um, before we actually brought it forward the first time. I want to give Nola so, something but, to do. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> so, I, I mean, we can vote on this. I, I, if, if Didn't you have it so that... The, the Mason County contract was the most important and urgent, and the others were, were kind of still working? Or are you talking you want to sign them all on right now? What we'd like to do is get, the, get you to concur that we should enter into the discussions, and we would have to bring back anything oh, for approval. Have, oh, absolutely. We actually and I have some questions about this. Um, <clears throat> and this is kind of a practical question that... I just wonder about, so we're going to have poop trucks coming through the city, um, how often, and I'm concerned about, like, is there going to be additional smell as the, the effluent is hosed into the, the machines down there? You would not have, I think, any more smell than you have right now. We actually perform this task ourselves. Right now, uh -huh. I don't believe anybody notices it. We have to haul from our satellite plant to the main plant on a at least biweekly basis. Um, so we are performing this for ourselves at this point. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think we've had anybody that has contacted us, at least that I know of, complaining about the truck traffic, the smell um, from that. Okay. Is, and do we know um, how, how, what is the proportion of what we're expecting to get if we should go with all of these other entities? How big a proportion is that compared to what our city would normally do? Is it twice as much? Is it as third as much? Or what we're expecting. I realize you can't give me an... You're, you're talking about the actual treatment of the sludge and what mm -hmm. we do compared to what we're taking in? Yes. Volume. It's Activity. about a quarter right now. If, if we brought these agencies in and took all four of them, it is about a quarter of what we do right now annually at okay. the main plant. Okay, and our dryer would be able to handle... We are running less than a full shift right now. Um, drying that and right now we take in or we we treat about 4.8 million gallons annually um, we would take in just short of about a million seven I believe with these four agencies 
Okay, and then my uh, other question for this is we do have the projected revenue. Does that go into a reserve fund for, um, for this department? Or what happens with the money, the additional revenue that we'll be pulling in? I think that would be for NOLA to answer. I would be under the assumption that it would go into the end fund balance. Um, but that would certainly be something that I think finance would have to answer. For the solid waste balance, are you talking about the general fund balance? I'm talking about the sewer utility. It would certainly, I believe, have to stay within that utility. But again, I think that would be a question for finance to answer. Okay. And my other question regarding that is, if that is the case, could those dollars be directed towards the Basin 3 project? I would have to get back to you on that. I'm not, okay. that, I think, again, I think that would be a finance question. Okay. Can we get an answer <laughs> now, or is, I, I, I just... I don't know that Nola's gonna be up to speed five hours into she the day. She might not know what Basin yeah. 3 she, is. I don't, I don't think we've briefed her on Basin 3 yet. Okay. okay. We've been on the books about six hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. But before we bring back any okay. contract. It looks like we're, yeah. We can yeah, get we, those we're, questions we're, answered. You're just looking for direction. I think it's a great idea, so, you know. Yeah, you know. I think it yeah. is a good idea, but I think we need to have the answers to these questions before I'm comfortable voting. Mm -hmm. All right, does that satisfy your needs? Yes, we were just looking for direction whether okay. we should continue to negotiate and talk to these mm -hmm. folks that are wanting to bring it to us or if it was completely off the table mm -hmm. is really what we were looking for. I think we concur on that one. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. At this time I'm going to go into administration reports and turn this mini, <laughs> mini this meeting over to our assistant uh, manager Vicki Look who is out sick today, so she is. the real manager gets to handle this situation. Trust me, Vicki is the real manager. So <laughs> I'll do a quick update. We, Vicki is busy now with some staffing. She is looking, at, we're going through a hiring for the retirement of Lynn, so they've made it through the interview process and they're working on that. We're also getting set for city engineer interviews, which will be later this week. And we also have uh, posting that has been out for a while, closed the 28th of last month for our accounting manager. We're going to move through that process in the next month or two, but those are the three big ones from administration. And then, as always, she's working on, her department's working on uh, public records requests. Does that conclude your report? That's it. All right. Next, it looks like we're going to have our acting account manager, Megan Crossman. Give us an update. First, I just wanted to mention that our new director, Nola, is here. She started today. So we're now we can clap for that one. Okay. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Um, first off, our 2015 annual report. Our financial data has been uploaded to the state auditor. We have received and will be reviewing our draft financial statements from the CPA firm that assisted us with the report. Um, we were not audited for 2015 and won't be until 2016. Since we were unable to submit our report on time, we will probably have a finding. Um, we will be actively working on our 2016 annual report come January, and it is likely we will not be able to submit it on time. The reasons for this is we've had quite a few staff changes, as you are well aware of, as well as software complications. We are currently, have just sent out our 2017 business license renewals and are in the process of sending out our 2016 business and occupation tax forms. Um, update on our new financial software. We are working with the IT department on an update and transfer of information onto another server so we can move forward with implementing InterGov software, which is for permitting and planning department. And we will be meeting with Tyler tomorrow afternoon to prioritize a redeploy redeployment of financials. It's important to note this software, was, the decision was made by the commission in 2011 to purchase this new software. 
the purchase was made in 2012, and then we were not able to move forward with implementation until 2015. Mm -hmm. To date, that implementation has not been successful. So parts of that financial software are operational. Other parts have we have not been able to utilize at all. So one of the examples we talked about last week in the budget discussion is having the online uh, permit tracking software for our permit applications. That is a component of this software package that we have not even been able to get off the ground at this point. We had Tyler as the uh, software company. They came out about two months ago and did a process audit over four days to figure out where we were using things appropriately and what we needed to do to get things back on track. They completed the audit. They sent us a very lengthy uh, roadmap for getting things up and running. We have asked for funds to be budgeted next year that would help us bring them back to do some of that work. NOLA and I and Megan are doing a conference call with the software company tomorrow, but our goal is that we need to very quickly get that software up and running because it will be, it's not only important for finance, but it's a tool that will be used by every department in the city. But to date, it has been a very lengthy prog process to not make as much progress as we would have hoped. All right, any questions? No, I would just like to say that um, I worked in the city uh, building and community development department, and then I left the city and went over to the county. The city did not have the um, project tracking, and the county did, and it will change our world when we get it. It is very cumbersome to do that type of work with our current system. So I'm looking forward to that being available. Thank you very much. All right, next is Craig Gregory again. Uh, we'll touch on uh, staff at this point. Uh, Storm Department has been replacing um, some drywalls up in the East Mountain View area. Uh, in that area of town, we don't have a lot of pipes in the ground to get rid of the stormwater. So we rely on dry wells. Um, we have expanded that system in the last couple of years, um, but at this point, we've had to replace a few of those to get us through at least this winter um, before we expand on that storm system up in East Mountain View. This week, uh, crews will also be cleaning the ditch the ditches on Brockdale um, from Wallace Nealon out to Island Lake Drive at the city limits. And we will have some road closures uh, out in that area, I believe on Wednesday, Thursday of this week. And we will be sending out a uh, notice to everyone um, about those road closures. EM&R has had a Slight delay, uh, we were hoping to have the fuel system up and running, the new fuel system up and running at this point. Uh, when the installers came out, they were short some of the things that they needed to get that up and running and are not able to come back until just after the first of the year when they get those parts in. The sewer department has been working on their ultraviolet disinfection system which is the last disinfectant as it goes out into the bay and discharges. So they have been working on replacing bulbs and getting that system back up to where it should be. The street department has been removing snow and ice, doing a lot of sanding, which also means that they have to do a whole bunch of sweeping afterwards so they have been out picking up the sand and patching after the snow event water has been working with spi uh, to do the to locate and install an eight inch meter um, at front and Neelan. they have also replaced a two inch galvanized line that also feeds spi and in the process of replacing the two inch galvanized line they also found two lead pigtails that they removed and replaced. Um, engineering is in the process of starting to look at a roadway evaluation and rating system. 
that we will be bringing forward over the next couple of months and letting you know what we've got for progress on that. And as Ryan mentioned earlier, we are interviewing on Wednesday for a new city engineer. And that is it for staff updates. For project updates, um, not a whole lot has changed. We haven't had a lot of time to work on these. We are still sitting on Angleside Booster Pump Station, which to date we have spent uh, just short of $1.7 million on. After your decision today, we certainly will be getting back to looking at that, whether we are going to try to fix that or repurpose it, but we will certainly be putting some staff time into that and be bringing that back to commission um, shortly. The Upper Mountain View pressure zone is still not being utilized. We have spent uh, 6.67 million on that project. We are going to get back and staff is going to be really looking at the loan forgiveness and the requirements to meet that. We did have some misinformation that I think we brought to the commission at the last update. And this is part of working through all of these projects that have been so unorganized but we have found that the four well systems, Class A wells, that would need to be, one of them would need to be disconnected are Washington State Patrol, Mason County Public Works, Department of Corrections, and the Dayton Airport Business Park, which is just to the west of the entrance to Mason County Public Works on 106. 102? Thanks, Bob. <laughs> um, just west of Public Works entrance on 102. Uh, the other Class A systems that we reported that would meet that requirement earlier, the trailer park um, by Airport Grocery and Ray Lake do not qualify for the $2 million loan forgiveness. So it will have to be one of those four mentioned. So we were, are certainly going to get back to looking at that again. We have spent some time on Basin 3 um, looking at funding sources that we have at this point, trying to ensure that this doesn't turn into another Lake Boulevard or Downtown Creeks. At this point, we have design that is 100% complete. but is in somewhat of disarray. Staff has not looked at those. They were not involved in the design and have just now started to go through those and look at those, but those plans do not look at this point with the way the scope was written to be fully used to do that entire project. We will have to send those back out. And we have spent uh, just short of 440000 on design um, so far. That was a low interest loan that we expended to get those designs done. Um, we have $3.33 million in grant that we have already secured. But it is two different grants, one of which expires in March of 18. The other expires in June of 19. So if we are going to get going with construction on those, we could ask for an extension. But again, as these th things get older and older, those extensions become less and less likely to get. So to get done with construction, we would certainly have to get moving on that fairly soon. Could I um, just intersect? Sure. I just had a call into the Department of Ecology this morning, Maya Bellin, the director, and I have communication with her office, and uh, we are working hard. Uh, Association of Washington Cities has given us, we're up in the top four bullet points for that organization as a priority to return funding or restore funding to the Centennial Clean Water Fund. And so we have a lot of, a lot of opportunity to push over in the legislature. And 
let's all really hope that we can get maybe another three or four or five million from that source over there to have Basin 3 literally be taken care of because that's that would be a very beneficial thing for the city of Shelton. So call your legislators and tell them funding for Basin 3. That's it. That was my, my, my spiel. And that's about what it would take is just short of $5 million to completely fund that. Right now we've got $4.47 million on a lo another low interest loan. Um, so hopefully we could get another grant to fund that uh, entirely. The water comp plan uh, update, we just got an estimate back from Corolo who is the consultant that we have on board to do the water comp plan. We budgeted this year for $100,000. The estimate came in at 216000 to complete that. Great. This morning, I made a call to Department of Health and Drinking Water, <coughs> asking them if they had any grants or funding options for us um, to look at to make up either all or the difference of that. Um, and they certainly had some options for us. We're going to take a look at in the next couple of weeks to see if we can apply um, for any of those. But they were very helpful in assisting us and knowing that we most likely don't have the funds to move forward with that, but it needs to be done. So they were very happy to assist in that. Um, to back up to SR3 Pear Orchard that we voted on um, a week ago, we, after that decision, uh, I made a call to Neil Campbell, the local programs engineer. He was very happy to hear that we had made a decision if we didn't have the funding to give that money back. Um, because it had been sitting on the shelf for so long, he was very excited to move forward and move away from that project. Um, we went back through the payback of that and worked with Neil Campbell to at least look at phase one, the park and ride being completed. And we came up with an estimate of just short of $100,000 that could be forgiven. It's not for sure at this point. It will have to go through not only Neil Campbell, but their headquarters. Um, but he felt semi-confident that we would be able to get that portion forgiven. Um, I wrote down a bunch of notes because we got to clarify for the information in the public that it is the city of Shelton did not write a check for a hundred and eleven thousand dollars. Four hundred and eleven. Four four hundred and eleven thousand. We did not do that out of our reserves last week. That is correct. Okay. We have not written a check. And so just to be sure, so let's start with the four eleven. If we do get ninety eight thousand dollars forgiveness, that comes down to three hundred and thirteen thousand. That's what my math says. Okay. I think you're fairly let's, accurate. Let's be hopeful that that, that that happens. Now, the other thing which has been kind of left out of the conversation is that of that 313000 we got a lot of stuff. The removal of the building. So did we remove a building over there, and was that, how much was that did we pay to do that, do you know? The cost of the removal, to the best of our knowledge that we can find, was $86,784.28. Okay, so we accomplished that. We did. Okay, so that comes down to around 225 whatever thousand dollars, okay. And then, which is hard to pinpoint on what we actually got, but we have now an easement from the city to connect to the port. That property that we bought. Yes, that we, gives did. Us we did acquire the property. land. Connecting property. Okay, and that that property had had the t test done, which did not show extreme pollution activity. That, That's correct. That is correct. I want to make sure I'm, I want, if there's information, I want the truthful information. We also 
have, I believe, a complete set of drawings, engineered drawings for this. 90%. 90%. Pretty complete. My car has got 90% or 10% wear on it, I'm sure. And then, to a degree, we have a functioning, not paid, but a functioning, par functioning park and ride over there, which is being used for employees to the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, I believe. Is that how that works? Or is there some park and ride over there that's being used? We do have cars utilizing that park and ride. Actually, Ryan and I took a trip out there the other day, and in the middle of the day, there was 15 to 20 cars parked there. So yeah. yes, they are utilizing the gravel parking lot as okay. a park and ride. So this was not a 411,000 check back to the state. We might not have to mail that much. Plus, we got a lot of other things going in the right direction. Benefits, things that we could possibly use on that. We did get benefits out yeah, of benefits. at least the portion that we completed on that project. Never, not 100%. We always want 100%. But I just wanted to make sure that there's clear information as we could about that situation. So I'm sorry I interrupted your report. It's sorry. It's fine. I chair the meeting. I get to do that once more. Uh, last thing, a little bit of good news finally for us. Uh, Lake Boulevard has been closed out, and TIV has granted us some additional expenditures that will reimburse us $48,581 that we were not expecting to get back from them, um, but we will be receiving a check. Um, for that amount here in the near future. Very good. There you go. What was that amount? What was that given back for? It was some expenditures that we didn't know were eligible um, for reimbursement that we became aware of, um, including the lighting from University mm -hmm. down to Delaware that we will be installing. It's about $4,700. Um, that the PUD will be mm -hmm. installing those. Um, but w it, it was basically for reimbursables that we didn't know were, were up for um, reimbursement from them. So where does that money go? Yeah. Yeah. Where will it go? I think that would be a question that <laughs> has been a little unclear at this point, but I think it would be better answered by finance. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a split, um, Commissioner, that the whole project has been uh, streets, general fund, and also some of the utility money that was a 64-36 split. Um, we're not sure at this point if that money that's being reimbursed will be put back into the funds by the same split. Okay. Good and news. that is it for Good news. Thank projects. you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so we'll turn our meeting over to our city manager at this time, Ryan Wheaton, for a few updates. I'm going to tackle these in reverse order since we were just talking about SR3 and Pear Richard. I was going to present a letter for the mayor to sign, but in light of the decisions today, I need to add a couple other things to that letter. So we will prep a letter for the return of not just SR3 and Pear Orchard uh, grants, but also for Evergreen Safe Routes and Downtown Creeks. That way we include everything in one letter and we will get that signed and sent off as soon as possible. At this point, we are not including any funds with that letter, but we are making the request, as Craig mentioned, that we get credit for phase one on SR3. And when we have the final amount that is uh, determined, then we will let you know what that is. But we are making the request for that reduction at this point. And have we identified where the money is going to come from? No. We have, and like I mentioned before, uh, when the question was raised, had we decided to go forward with these projects, we didn't know either way. Mm -hmm. So we are still working on that. Another item that came up recently, I know that Commissioner McDowell mentioned the location of mental health facility from the Thurston Mason Behavioral Health Organization. One of the things that has come up at the staff level is that we have never entered into discussions with that group in terms of other options that are available that the city may be able to help out with. 
So one of the things I'd like to ask for today is that I, that you concur that I'd be able to go and speak with that group this week to discuss some of the properties that the city owns that we have abated that may be potential use for that uh, facility. And if that were possible, that we would like to have that conversation done before next week's meeting at the PUD. I, I don't know that it will work out, but we'd like to make that offer that the city has heard that there are some concerns and we have some other options. I, I know that from me, I have spoken to the county a lot about that location and I did not think it was the best location. Seeing how the chamber and us have entered into a downtown visioning process and I know that Commissioner McDowell has spoken probably to the county about that. I don't know what, what Tracy Moore, I do not know exactly where she is on that, but I, I would think that I would agree with us trying to see if there isn't a way we can partner with rather than alienate the discussion. Uh, if there is another option, I would greatly like to see that location moved. I've had numerous discussions with other uh, interested parties and uh, I agree that we um, we need the service very badly. We do. I don't know that that building is the right building, but I also know that probably the good for the community outweighs the negative for that site, but I would very much like to pursue another location. Yes, this is our, my conversations with anyone has not been, because I sit on the criminal justice board and I know that we have to have those beds. <coughs> it's just location, location, location. We're trying to put a downtown visioning thing together, you know, and so if there's, if we, who knows, we might come up with something that's actually better for them than that location. So I guess you're looking for direction from us to at least have the conversation. So I think we concur that you should have that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any more final touches? That's it. All right. So our next meeting will be December 19th at uh, Monday evening at um, 6 p.m., this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>